we're here with uh, Duke, and Duke has a big problem with his kennel. And so I'm going to have the Guardian pan down so we can see what Duke is doing right now. We're, we're doing some kennel training. A lot of people put a dog in a kennel and they just close the door and they're gone. Well, then the dog does never develop a way of dealing with and figuring out how to be relaxed in the kennel. They say for humans, the hardest part of being in, a, in, a, in jail is to have the, uh, ke the jail door close. When it closes, you know that you're in there for the night. So right now, he's in the kennel. I'm leaving the door open, and I'm just moving forward to block him anytime he tries to come out. I make a hissing sound, too. Um, but because the door is open, he doesn't have anything to rebel against. Now, he's scratching all around, but he already knocked out a couple of teeth panicking when he was in the kennel and left alone when his guardians left. So what we want to do is uh, to help a dog kennel train is a couple things. We want to, first of all, make sure that we're here and help them practice being in the kennel. Dogs are somewhat programmable. Once they get in the habit of doing something, they're going to continue doing that. So if we put them in the kennel, then we leave. Now the dog's dealing with two things. I'm, I'm sequestered in the kennel and I'm abandoned. So by doing this while we're here, the dog gets to practice being in the kennel while our presence is here. So we don't have to feel abandoned. And because I'm leaving the door open, now I'm blocking it with my feet, but it is still open. He knows how to exit and enter the kennel. So um, I'm not going to let him... I'm not going to let him exit, but every time he SITs, right there he's sitting too close, but usually when the dog SITs, I take a step backwards at the same time. Now, I don't want to say SIT. If I say SIT and he knows it, he's just following a command that's not significant of anything. Right now, he's making it very clear that he doesn't want to be in here, and that's okay. We're help we have to outlast him. When you're doing this exercise, it is extraordinarily important that you do not give up. So one of the guardians asked me, well, what if we have to go do something? while we're in the middle of doing this. You don't do this exercise, especially the first time, unless you have at least an hour. Because you need to make sure that you're gonna be there no matter how long it goes, so the dog understands that I can't, I can't outlast the humans. The humans are gonna outlast me. Now when he does this, sometimes I'll pin their neck just a little bit, so they feel a little panic. We don't wanna cause any, any damage. But that panic state, if every time I stick my head out, I get kind of caught, it makes me less apt to want to go out. But again, we don't want to choke them or anything bad happen to them. Now, this is easier when you have an adult than when you have a puppy because I have to kind of move my leg to block him. Now, he's being very, pers very persistent. We've been at this for about a half an hour before we started filming this. Um, normally, I like to film the first one, but I can't do a video that's half an hour. So basically, what we do is every time he sits down, I, and as long as he's not trying to challenge to come out of the kennel, I take a step backwards at the same time. When he SITs, I take a step backwards. That's my way of kind of communicating. That's what I liked. Because you when you sit down as a dog, you're challenging the human less in this particular scenario. So if I move backwards at the same time that he sits down, then that tells him, oh, when I sit, the human moves further away from the gate, so I'm getting closer to exiting. So, uh, but if he moves forward to exit, I rush towards the, there we go, just like that. So I want to rush towards it. So, uh, sorry, it's a, it's, a, it's a smaller room, so it's hard to get a good camera angle to get both of us in the shot at the same time. So he sits down, I take a step back. Now, he wasn't looking at me, he didn't notice. So he notices, I come forward right away, and I would make a hissing sound sometimes. There we go, he sits down, I step back. Now, if I have to, I can use this gate to close it temporarily, but I don't want to use it too much because then they just kind of paw at it. We already have broken teeth doing that. We don't, by leaving the door open, there's nothing for him to really rebel against. Now, he can rebel against me blocking him, but eventually we're going to be able to walk several steps away and he's going to stay in the kennel. Yes, buddy, I know. Now, uh, it, uh, if I would have thought about this ahead of time, I would have grabbed, I have a tennis racket in my trunk of my car. Sometimes I'll use a tennis racket because I can block him here uh, and without using my feet. So if it goes a little bit longer, I might have one of the guardians go out to my car and grab the tennis racket unless they have one in here. Uh, yeah, if, uh, yeah, if you could. It's in the trunk of my car. I'm going to continue talking while you're going to grab that. Um, now, if he does escape, you just immediately put him right back in. Now to start this off, before we did this stage, I sat a couple feet away from the kennel and I tossed treats in. Every time he went in the kennel and got it, I said a command word. In his case, the command word is going to be the word station. 
Now, I don't want to let him continually come out like he is now, because the more that he does that, the more he will continue to do that. That's why the tennis rack is going to come in here. Right there, I wanted, I left that a little bit longer than I normally would, because I, I don't want him to continue doing that. So eventually, I'm going to step back when he sits down, and then when he, uh, and we'll wait for him to lay down. Thank you. All right, this will make it work. See how it's easier for me to block? Okay, so uh, I don't know if he's going to do this while we're filming this, so I'm just going to describe what's going on, uh, and we'll hopefully maybe have a second video later, depending on how, how pers persistent he is. But the key for this is, again, to be more persistent than the dog. He cannot outlast you. So once he sits down, once he lays down, then I immediately take a knee, I hold out my hand like this with a treat, and I say C-O-M-E. When he comes to me, I let him have the treat. Now, first couple times you do this, sometimes the dog won't leave. But if you just got done spending a half an hour saying I can't leave the kennel, now you're saying I can leave, what is it? Well, it's, you can leave when I tell you you can leave, but when I say no, it's no. So, um, <laughs> uh, but basically, uh, he will figure out the first couple times he's going to really per be persistent like this. And after a while, he realizes as soon as I lay down, they let me out of the kennel. That's why as soon as they lay down, the first couple times we let them out right away. Now, as soon as we, we get to the point where he starts laying down within 15 seconds, then we start adding time. Once he lays down, then we wait five seconds. And then we say, come. Second time we do it, we wait. Uh, and, and we might have to do that a couple times. And the next time we do it, we might go to 10 seconds. And then 15, 20, 40, 60. Normally, I don't want to close this, but he's really freaking out right now. So I'm going to do this right now, temporarily let him settle. So eventually, we're going to work our way up to the point where he's in the kennel with the door open, laying down for up to about 10 minutes. But we're going to start out with five seconds, then we call him out. Then next time, 10 seconds. Next time, 20 seconds. Next time, 40 seconds. Next time, a minute. Now, if we go from 40 seconds to a minute, and he can't do it, he freaks out, and he gets up and won't lay back down, then back up and go from 20 seconds to 30 seconds. But the first stage of this is going to keep him in, in the kennel with the door open until he can stay in there calm and relaxed, laying down for up to 10 minutes. Then we're going to repeat the whole process again, but this time, once he lays down, we're going to come and close this door. We're not going to latch it. We're just going to close it. First time we close it for like five seconds, then we open it up and give him the come command and he can come out. The next time we do it, 10 seconds, then 20 seconds, and 40 seconds, same way, work our way up to 10 minutes. But again, the door is open. Now in this case, I would have a chair right about here and just be sitting down. So you're right next to it, he can see you, he's not panicky. The third stage is actually repeat the whole process, but this time I actually latch it. But again, I do this only while I'm here. So this way the dog gets used to being in the kennel with the human here, Nobody's panic. Nobody is, you know, leaving. But and because we waited for him to lay down and we uh, and stay laying down for up to ten minutes before we start closing the door, and now he is comfortable and he has practiced being inside the kennel. After enough time, then he will He will be able to relax and understand that just because I put him in the kennel, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Now, a couple other little uh, little sidebar notes that you can do. Some of the things you can do is like to take a bone and zip tie it to the back of the kennel. So he can only chew on it while he's in the kennel. Another trick is to take a bully stick or something he really likes, toss it in the kennel, close the door with him outside of the kennel. That creates a desire to want to go in the kennel because it's got good stuff. Um, and then the, the main thing is to help the dog practice with, you in the, with him being in the kennel with you here. So that he actually understands just because I'm putting the kennel does not automatically represent the humans leaving. And after enough time, then he can start actually leaving the house and for short periods of time at first and we're going to work our way up to there. And then eventually we can have the dog, once you get up to the two hour mark and he's relaxed, you're home free. Dogs, once they hit two hours, they're good. Now, because he's such a young puppy and because we have to let him out so often for potty training, I've recommended the guardians that they set up a puppy playpen and they're going to actually set one up here shortly. We're going to have this in the puppy playpen, but with the door completely open the whole time. The old, and we'll have linoleum flooring in the puppy playpen. So the only soft place to, to actually be in uh, was going to be on the actual, in the puppy, uh, in the kennel. But the door is open. So he's going to get used to going in the kennel and sleeping in the kennel. Because the door's not closed, it doesn't feel like it's, it's closed in on him. And because 
uh, it's the only soft place to, to lay on, you're just gonna get used to it. So these are a whole bunch of tips and tricks to get your puppy to learn to relax in the kennel.